Christian! Wake up! I forgot to tell you what Ruby even was. Oh, you. Yeah, me. As you know, I'm one of the biggest Ruby fans in our friends group. And I would be extremely honored if we could finish the series together. Hell, I mean, I got a few things to talk about, mainly involving my favorite character in the series, Yang. So, yeah, what do you think? Okay, sure. Um, I thought we were gonna do a back and forth shtick until you agreed, so. That's awkward. Why didn't you do a back and forth shtick? I kinda need all the help I can get for Volume 4 and 5, because, honestly, I do not like Volume 4. What?! You, you're kidding me, right? You, you got you. You're kidding me. I just babbled for three seconds. I'm sorry, it's boring as hell, and I'm gonna explain what's wrong with the entire volume before moving on to five. Okay. Go for it. So we open in what I assume some kind of hell with a few new bad guys and Cinder, who lost an eye. The girl with the silver eyes. How is it a novice was able to best one of us? Even without her new power, it should have been effortless. It is because of the maiden's power. <laughs> is her voice damaged or something because she just whispers words to Emerald's ear? Why did you Find the girl that did this to Cinder. <laughs> this cat scorpion villain from Spider-Man. Next, we cut to a new character doing some farm stuff. Then we go into the forest where Nora and Ren are arguing about the best team name. Because we're trying to forget the bad things that happened. But the pain will never go away. Then suddenly giant rock grip! No spin dashing boars or something like that. Just a big grim covered in rocks. Oh, never mind. It's a possessing grim. Yeah, we didn't want it to be too gory anyway. Except being sliced in half and getting decapitated. But aside from that, no headshots, please! Another victory for Team Junior! Alright, you know, okay, Ren, I think you're onto something. It, it, it's just not sounding great anymore. So after being thanked for taking out the Grim called the Geist, the team are out of workshop as John gets some upgrades. What is that?! My hoodie? I've always had this. <laughs> Our friends have died and Yang has her arm cut off. <laughs> well, we finally cut to Weiss in the whitest, most bland, and depressing home ever. Seriously, the setting is whiter than Salem, and she's an evil goddess. Whatever, she has to talk with her brother, but who cares? Oh look, a destroyed village and a dying huntsman with dramatic music. God, this volume's gonna be a joyride! I would chat with Weiss's father, Jax, when Weiss walks in. Thanks to him, Atlas is forbidden from exporting dust to other kingdoms. Which is why the Schnee Dust Company will be holding a charity concert in the coming weeks. Well, at least there's one character that's amusing and provides comic relief within this pale-ass setting. Ruby wakes up from horrible memories of Pura dying when she sees John training with Pura's tutorial video. I want you to know that I'm just happy to be a part of your life. I'll always be here for you, John. Finally, we see Blake again on the ship when the captain noticed her being lonely. It can be quite a lonely voyage, but I've found those that do tend to have the more interesting stories. She then takes off her bow and throws it into the water, but there's a mysterious hooded figure in the boat. I'm going to be 1200% honest on this one. Yang was very well executed in this volume. Her behavior, very well made. I mean, hell, she's just traumatized. Come on, 
If my arm was cut off by my best friend's ex, I'd be a traumatized prick too. I probably shouldn't say that in case he's watching me. Back on the boat, Blake sees a hooded guy, which causes him to run away, and then suddenly a big grim attacks the boat. The hooded figure was actually Sun, and he helps fight the grim. After killing it, Sun explains why he came along. I saw you run off. The moment you left, I knew exactly what you were doing. You're going on a one-woman rampage against the White Fang! What? Oh please, that woman's pathetic in terms of one person army. I know a perfect guy for that. You really think I could get Neptune on the ocean? They flew back to Mistral. I told them I'd catch up. You know, I'm not surprised they didn't make a cat girl joke where she's afraid of water. We cut back in hell. Uh, Josh, do you know what this place is called? Uh, uh, hold on, I'm checking to see what that place is called. Here it is. Just around its moon. Well, that's what I think it is. It's not confirmed, but... Yeah, gotta wait. This ball, or whatever it is, makes clicker sounds. Did you kill Ozpin? I want to hear you say it. Yes. Speaking of Ozpin, we cut back to the farmer kid doing some stuff when he noticed something weird. Hello, I'm Professor Ozpin. Oscar, you be careful with those tools. After having another nightmare, the teachers Port and Ublik were laughing with Tai Yang as they said they're working on restoring Beacon to its former glory. You still got a long way to go before you're ready for the real world. If you honestly think that you're ready to go out there on your own, I guess you lost some brain cells along with that arm. You jerk! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have no idea what's more stupid. Taiyang assaulting his daughter about losing brain cells along with an arm? Or Yang just laughing at that joke? Even though losing an arm can mean a lifetime of suck! Chillax. I know what Ty said may have sounded rude. Come on. He was joking with her. Where do you think Yang got us into human from? Yeah. He's messing with her. So don't worry. He's not the worst father of the year, nor the worst parent of the year. That goes to someone else that we'll talk about in volume five. Never <coughs> wrong. What? Crow and Raven have an intense conversation about whether or not Salem has some relics. And Raven knows of the Spring Maiden, which she refused to give any whereabouts of. The next day, Blake and Son make it to an island called Menagerie. They gave us a terrible island in the corner of Remnant to try and shut us up. That's a pretty good summary, yeah. She returns to her family, which is touching, but sometimes awkward. I've seen your daughter in action before, and trust me, she's got some moves. And what exactly do you mean by that? That same day, Blake's dad has a meeting with all people, the White Fang. Her father doesn't know about the incident that Blake brings up. Those guys were creepy. I really don't like you. Ruby and the gang continues walking through the forest. Can't they just ride a car or something? Or do they not have a license? I mean, how long is this trip? Oh look, another village. Not a destroyed village. But an unfinished village! Such a variety of things you can do! Half of the volume is literally our heroes going through the forest and once in a while finding a village. That's literally half the volume! Daddy, can you hear me? Daddy, can you hear me? Can you hear me praying? Can you hear what I'm saying? Oh look, somebody says bad things and why throws a fit. Next! So we return to- HOW LONG HAVE THEY BEEN AT THIS VILLAGE?! Taryn, the discount Scorpio villain of Spider-Man, shows up for Ruby. <gasps> the rose has thorns! My little flower, I'm here to whisk you away with me. Yeah, you are not carnage and you will never will be. He gives our heroes crap until Crow shows up and- OH GOD COME ON! Are you really serious? I mean, it's the next episode.
episode, but the fight got really interesting. But now we begin with Asuka trying to ignore Aspen, which he won't do forever. Whatever. Look, this asshole father is keeping wise and making sure she doesn't go anywhere and she's no longer an Anders. But she's gonna try to escape. Oh, and we cut back to the fight right where we left off. Yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> You know, Josh, I know you love this show so much, but at this point, I'm bored to death, and this volume is just slow as hell. What's your favorite fairy tale? <sighs> really? That's how you were in the episode? Asking about your favorite fairy tale? Well, Crow brings up the whole Four Maidens thing. John is upset. Crow says Ruby using Silver Eyes has made some powerful enemies upset. What is all of this? Ruby's being hunted. The schools are being attacked. All for what? What is the point of all of this? Will you just tell us what's going on? Finally, some motivation. Maybe that'll make things interesting. See the four gifts to mankind. Knowledge, creation, destruction, and choice. Each of them exists in a physical form. If someone were to collect all four, they'd be able to change the world. The Huntsman Academies were created to train generations of humanity's protectors, but they also serve another purpose, guarding the relics. Okay, one, while we're glad to know what the relics is all about, that doesn't explain why the bad guys do what they do when John asks. Two, if the relics are so powerful, why didn't somebody get the idea to use them when Beacon was attacked? This fire is driving me crazy! You've never been very talkative, but that boy you brought home loves to run his mouth. I want to hear more about the adventures of Team Ruby. Well, they had some exciting adventures. There's awesome action. There's shadow people. There's a lot of funny moments. It's far better than what we're going through right now! So, is it warm in Vale? Huh? It just seems like your outfit doesn't cover very much. Why did you leave Vale? Why did you leave your friends behind? Huh? Something interesting? Son? No. <laughs> did you know that crows are a sign of bad luck? I thought black cats are bad luck. <sighs> I wish. But don't worry, I got 54 leaf clovers and a few six, maybe even a seven leaf clover. Blake gets upset with Sun, as Sun was trying to report a right fang when the spy just so happened to be around. Blake throws a phone and they both hear the spy's voice and try to go after her. Meanwhile, Crow seems to be poisoned. That's unfortunate. Oh look, another Yang scene. Do your thing, Josh, I'm gonna go take a quick nap. Alright, sleepy pants. Here we see Yang and Tai sparring. We're going at it. But during this, Tom does mention that Yang's semblance is pretty much a giant temper tantrum. I mean, he even says that it's a temper tantrum himself. How is me using my semblance any different than someone else using theirs? Because not everyone else's is basically a temper tantrum. Eventually, Yang does pick up a strategy that Tai had. And boom! Smiling and brutal. 